scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessing and honor. The Lamb that was slain Glory and power Glory and power Forever and ever Forever and ever And ever Please sit down. We take our time to worship him like this because you see, hallelujah. Do you know in an average church service, please listen, in an average church service, many things happen to people that they never are aware of. Impartations, healings. Your assignment as a ministry is to make the atmosphere conducive that's your job you have no power to change any man listen the assignment is to make the atmosphere conducive for the healing presence of jesus for deliverances to happen you see that when the atmosphere is set any utterance that comes from that glory will produce results it becomes easy for deliverance to happen don't we are organized people but you see we must be careful so that we do not bring tradition and box the potentials of the holy spirit when we come before him it is because we are aware of our inadequacy so he becomes the lord of the service there is a system of coordination of course but he must be allowed to reign supreme this is the secret let me tell you this is why many people never experience the power of god in church because we don't allow him we come as men of god and want to interrupt him the ushers come to interrupt him the worship team comes to interrupt him but if we can align with him the reason why you are coming is first before you love because you love god second because you are coming to grow thirdly you expect his power to touch an area of your life is that true yes so is 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 time wasted if you come and commit 
whatever number of hours you spend here and you cannot leave back with an evidence many of you here this is your first experience think how terrible it will be that you left wherever some of you are pastors that came to refire your spirit and get an impartation some of you are leaders in various places how could you come and just watch a man talk for a few hours and share the grace and go it's not only sin is wickedness it's not only sin against God it is wickedness hallelujah our job is to make sure you experience God in his entirety the program was so designed that every face tackles an aspect of your life and that by the time we're sharing the grace what escaped praise and worship will not escape the fire of prayer what escaped the fire of prayer will not escape revelation you see that so the programs are designed we're, we're not religious people trying to advance a man's ministry god is bigger than that this is serious business of changing people's lives are we together we're excellent people but we are not stupid people when it comes to transformation i'm not um, you can dress well and look well but the moment it comes to the destinies of men we must be serious we must take it seriously because we are stewards by grace and we must be accountable unto god hallelujah praise the lord i'm going to speak briefly um but I, I want to pray i just want to pray as i was sitting i sensed in my spirit that there were people who needed um a touch of the holy spirit and and for various reasons these things happen this touch can bring deliverance this touch can bring direction when the holy spirit touches you um there are many reasons why he touches you sometimes even you who is imparted you may not know why but for many people that is the answer to your prayer the anointing comes as the answer to your prayer it is not faith that answers your prayer faith connects you to the anointing it is the anointing that does the job your faith is your conviction faith does not bring results on its own the job of faith is to connect you to the power of god it is the power of god that supplies the possibilities hallelujah so you shouldn't be here having sicknesses having burdens and then we're just preaching and then it's not it's not working in your life so i want to pray for you hallelujah there are families that are represented that deserve the touch of god and um i know that he will bless us he will lift us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah just two things the lord is imparting the spirit of wisdom this is this is what this is what the lord is speaking to me and this is not everyone but that anointing there is a grace there is an unction that is going to come on several people is an unction strange grace for wisdom grace for wisdom supernatural grace for wisdom all the overflows whether one two three doesn't matter where you are um, it, it there are exact impartations that are coming on people right now let me just do that job by the spirit i stretch my hands by the spirit and i command it so now i declare i send an anointing upon the word let the performance of the word be accomplished everywhere inside overflow one overflow two overflow three i command it so in the name of jesus wisdom this is what many of us need in this season is coming upon you that grace that grace wisdom to surmount mountains mountains everywhere there are people following online that grace the angel of his presence is bringing upon your life the hand of god is resting upon you wisdom the spirit of wisdom receive it i know that we're all getting it but there are specific people that this is for you will not escape it once it's for you the word of the lord will look for you will look for you no matter where you are for as long as you are within this vicinity the word of the lord will search for you and that impartation will happen in your spirit in the name of jesus i speak it i command it i decree it as an ordinance in the spirit everyone who must carry this level of grace wisdom wisdom that will bring an end to mountains that stand before you 
in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the second thing that I see the Lord imparting is the healing anointing now this doesn't happen all the time but I'm seeing it happen healing anointing the Lord wants to bring a new level of the healing anointing in the name of Jesus Christ there are people that must carry that anointing the Lord is saying I have been waiting upon you there are people whose bodies need the touch of the spirit not just you being healed the healing anointing that grace you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in visions in prayer meetings God has told you but in the name of Jesus I activate that dimension in the name of Jesus take that anointing take that anointing the healing grace the healing power of Jesus the healing power there are some of you who are visitors this is your first time coming but the Lord brought you because you need an encounter with that unction in the name of Jesus receive receive of that grace let there be a transference of that grace that dwells in the secret place of the most high take it half you reign you reign you reign you reign you opportunities restoration of anointings graces graces connections in the name of Jesus I'm hearing it in the spirit restoration restoration God is creating scenarios in people's lives recreating it again recreating it again by the spirit of God restoration 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 make sure you believe it restoration restoration financial restoration spiritual restoration restoration in career opportunities relationships Listen, there are people here, the dimensions of God you used to experience. Something happened and it looked like that portal just closed. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. Let there be a reopening of those doors. The gate that was open in the spirit that gave you access to that dimension. 
Let it be reopened. Shakata bakata lekata. Legata kata kate bakaroko toshi. Rekete koto sabakata la bakata. Regardless of the reason why it was closed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let it be opened. Your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the access that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the wisdom that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the power that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the influence. If we will spend half the time we waste around committing to His presence, the pursuit not looking for rema not looking for power not not all of these things focusing staying with him there are many prayer warriors that will never find his presence because we have turned it into idolatry there are many fasting giants that may never find him because they are just motions there are many Bible study giants that may never find him because we shroud ourselves in activities. The power is not in the activities. It's in the sincerity of your heart, your pursuit. It's not in the activities. It says, and ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Please sit down if you can. A lot is already happening now. Just allow those under the anointing. This is koinonia. I like you to be sensitive tonight as I teach we have begun the year expect impartations 
impartations mean that God is doing something impartation means that there is a transference you see that there is a transference of possibility and whether you are in any of the overflows let me tell you truthfully speaking the only advantage that those inside have over those outside is just the convenience that does it spiritually speaking those things don't make any there's no difference at all doesn't matter what nation doesn't matter where it's just our psychology to think we're nearer to the man of God God can speak to someone in overflow three smuggling himself somewhere near the wall nobody knows and then God just visits him like that this is the ministry of the spirit hallelujah I want to teach you something tonight that I really believe with all my heart will grant you access to not only have intimacy with God but it will grant you access to walk in the reality of signs and wonders I will continue to teach these things is my assignment to guide us to help us become spiritual people you don't become a spiritual man by frowning your face you don't become a spiritual man by being a talkative you don't become a spiritual man by show of religion it is a dimension in the spirit you climb to when you are there everything around you knows you are there it's an exact location there is no guess about it hallelujah when God gives a word by now you already know that every time prophecy comes there is always a commitment there is always a commitment hallelujah in overflow one there are two people the power of God is coming on please bring them inside I want to prophesy to them you are here working miracles I worship you I worship you. You are here, wiping every tear. I worship you. Way maker, way maker, miracle work, come sleep, light in the darkness. the word for these people the Lord says even the lawful captive shall be delivered even the lawful captive I break the siege of witchcraft there is strange operation of witchcraft I command the siege of witchcraft be broken in the name of Jesus even the lawful captives shall be delivered I will contend with them that contend with you I will contend with them that contend with you even the lawful captive the siege over your families the siege is broken right now the siege is broken I decree it and I declare it by the authority of the kingdom the siege is broken the siege is broken the Lord says I should continue prophesying it that the siege is broken is broken I use this as a point of contact to speak to everyone under the sound of my voice if there is anything sitting on anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names I stretch my hands and I command in the name of Jesus that every chain that holds the destiny of anyone here I command that that chain is broken right now in the name of Jesus over your life and over your family I declare that it is broken in the name of Jesus please sit down
sit down. Just allow me to do my mad thing here for a few minutes. We'll get back to the word. The spirit of death. Oh, death. Where is thy sting? Oh, grave. Where is thy victory? I shut the mouth of the grave. I shut the mouth of the grave. Why am I prophesying this? I shut the mouth of the grave. 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 Zekoto sheke teke teke nekata. I shut the mouth of the grave. In the name of Jesus, over every family, I shut the mouth of the grave. I shut the mouth of the grave. I shut the mouth of the grave. Listen, let me tell you. Hold on. That's not what I'm teaching. But you see this grave is a spirit. There are people there that can call people who are alive to come and join them. I have a series there and I will teach you death, hell and the grave. I will teach you. We have a lot this year. But you see this grave you see is not a pit there are people it was it not a conversation that was happening lazarus and they said please let somebody go there that means someone that is out that's why i say oh grave where is your victory that the grave can choose a person and say bring him to join us i say it again the mouth of the grave sheketo kaskataba bekoto seketeriakata the mouth of the grave is shot over every family shot over every individual hallelujah listen don't mind the physical actors that act it can be accident it can be anything it's a lie there is a call the grave as a living thing can pick somebody and say let him come and join us i've seen the spirit of death you know that so for me it's not it's not a it's not a mystery at all hallelujah do you know i once saw a vision of someone a real vision i saw the person already buried but in the physical, he was walking happy and ha he didn't reach three months. That person died. In the realm of the spirit, he is already done with. The person is alive, having plans. Whereas the grave has called him. Pray in one minute and shut the mouth of the grave. Pray, don't be afraid. Oh death, where is your sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, oh death, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I curse you by the God of heaven. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Pray, pray. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Pray for your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Let me talk to that woman. You see this woman? Leave her. She knows why she's coming. Come. I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a woman that has already died. It's over with her. This woman I'm seeing. She has been seeing it. Dead men calling her. Calling her in the night. Some of you have seen it. People who have died. That's the grave calling you. Pray again and say I reject that call. I reject that call. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Makapogoto Sokotoba, we challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Just help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. This, this is what should be when you come into the presence of God. Burdens lifted, plagues stopped, not time wasted, not time wasted. Only God knows how many obituaries were averted just by having access to intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Don't live your life anyhow becoming a victim of the wickedness. Let me teach you something. A am I boring you? Am I wasting your time? Next time you have a dream and you see dead people calling you, don't get up and just jot it down. Whether it is raining or not, if you have to cancel your job for that day, is it not when you are alive you go for work? If you get up and see dead people, where I don't care whether it's your own mother or father, once you are dead, is gone. The familiar spirits use the face of individuals. Some of them can be our loved ones. They come and they dine with you. There are encounters. There are people who have died in Christ. They are called the spirits of just men made perfect. I have encountered some of them. But this one is death calling you. Calling your children. Sit down allow the devil come and destroy you. That's what happens to people. They don't do anything about it. And you see, and because they don't act, one day you find out that you just get up. Whereas it was concluded. Remember the book of Job. They were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily. And in one day, everything happened. That an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning. This realm is not the only realm where people function. There are powers that operate. They can go out of this realm and call people. Jesus knew that principle. That's why he stood and called Lazarus back. This is how to be spiritual. Not just for yourself, to help other people. Now with this knowledge, God can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody. Because you know what to do about it. You don't sit down and it happens and say, hey, I saw it all. You stop it. This grave you see, read what Solomon said about it in the book of Proverbs. It can never say enough. This grave, it keeps opening. Hell and enlarge itself. Opens, receive people. Finds young people. Just when people are at the prime of their life, that devil comes from wherever. Don't ever make death look like a mystery. It is as predictable a spirit as sickness. Innocent people plan their lives. I don't know why I started talking about this. Plan their lives and do all. Do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life? He can't make you leave God. He can't make you this. The next plot is to kill you. Whether or not you die in Christ or not, at least you are dissociated from your body. It's still a plus for him. Make sure you insist that you are here for a long time. There is work to be done. Give birth to children and before the ch children are still young, you die and leave them. And leave them in the hands of wicked people. It's not to make you afraid. It's to let you know that death can eat us. It attempts, death is boastful. He say, oh death, where is your victory?
it's important to go where you know God is. You don't know when your word and your deliverance. When, when, when you say invite people, it's not because a man of God is looking for fame. Somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash. Just coming to stand in the cold and that's the end of it. Hallelujah. Death. We're ending that plague. You can live long. You can live strong. By choice and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Don't sit down and allow the devil say that this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much for those of you who are coming for the first time. This is Koinonia. This is Koinonia. First John. We are looking at the epistle of John. I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the, the parameters for measuring spirituality, like I've taught us, is first our conformity to the image of the Christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. But then there is a dimension of it that I want to introduce to us tonight. And is a dimension where Christ is seated at the heart of every individual. And I'm not just talking of born again. Born again is a decision, is a willingness to embrace the Lordship of Christ. But there is a journey that a believer must follow to get to a point where Christ is experientially seated in his heart. That place is the place of power. That place is the place of authority. That is the place where Satan, death, hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you. There is a realm of immunity. I'm trusting God that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom, but we become the distributors of this reality. Is that true? First John chapter 2 and verse 15 a popular scripture here i want us to examine it just listen to me carefully first john chapter 2 thank you jesus first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 verse 15 the holy spirit is speaking to me again and i will bring laughter to her family and I will bring laughter to her family. I will bring laughter. You will hear again the sound of laughter. The sound of melody. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You will hear the sound of laughter. You will hear the sound of laughter. Love not the world neither the things that are in the world please follow me carefully if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him verse 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world 17 and the world passeth away and the loss thereof but he that doeth the will of god abided forever go back to verse 15 there is a journey into what we call carnality. Carnality is not, um, it's not necessarily a bad word. It's just a description of a state. Please listen carefully. When we say a man is carnal, it's not supposed to be an insult. Are we together? The Bible says, for to be carnally minded is death. 
but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so the bible gives us the progression of carnality carnality is not materialism carnality leads to materialism are we together carnality is not unrighteousness carnality leads to unrighteousness listen very carefully and this is how the journey starts number one love not the world the word world there is the world system the governing system the system of activities that are in the world it's not just talking about um, um it's not just talking about the cosmos alone you see that it's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone but it also has an extension is the word aeon the the thinking pattern the mentality the system of operation the modus operandi that comes with the world system listen he says love not the world so that is the foundation that's how believers or people become carnal the starting point of carnality is an attachment an attachment to the system listen not receiving cars and houses that's not carnality not prosperity not poverty no that, that's not what i'm talking about many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of god that's not what i'm talking about at all but then he says the word there is eros love attachment attachment so the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God the first dimension of the workings of the spirit is to be able to culture and pull your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system you can have things but when they have you it's called carnality the mistake of the rich fool was not his possession he said my soul find rest that was his mistake not not the abundance but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things are we together now so the bible says love not the world it's a warning it's a warning that if you want to be spiritual do not be attached that means every one of us by default born of a woman there is a probability to being attached with this system the flamboyancy that is associated with this system their their desires and their lusts and their appetites that this is something that by default we can become victims of then he moves further and says neither the things that means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that but the things that are there you can be attached to them you see but let me tell you forget about walking with god when the things of this world are glued to you the bible we're, we're, we're still on that journey it says if any man loves the world that means he gives you a little test like saying if any man has a pounding headache there are signs that that man probably has malaria so he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the the love of god that is at work in you you can easily check it by your attachment your attachment the same way you check your temperature your pressure and all of these things that you can check that love dimension and then it categorizes them into three it says all that is in the world the next verse 16 for all that is in the world can be categorized into three number one he calls it the lust of the flesh the limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body if you did not possess a body there are certain things that cannot happen to you but now because you sustain a material body that there are side effects to having this body are we together now and he's saying that you must walk with the holy spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body and then the second he says the lust of the eyes the limitations that come upon your life 
on the strength of the things you see how many of you know that the bible says the eye is the light of the body there are things if you did not have capacity to see they will not be planted in your heart the word imagination comes from the word image and that's how we think we think in pictures so you your 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 eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart and then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit are we together now the lust of the eyes and then the third is called the pride of life you've heard me teach it the pride of life is different from pride you cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements you can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved but the pride of life is the vain glory and the self-glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements like nebuchadnezzar having built babylon he said make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments let all men bow that's the pride of life the pride of life is what happened to lucifer i will exalt myself above the stars of god i will be like the most high until he was charged with iniquity are we together now and so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life that the love of the father is in you and that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual listen the depth to which the power of god flows through you all these miracles these signs and wonders that you see they don't just happen because hands are laid please i, I like us let's let's be um please come david Dam. let's let's not make a fool of ourselves here there is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands there are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself a track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens you don't just speak and then god it looks like god owes your word attention no sir no sir for i am a man under authority and the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty and on the strength of my submission i say to one go and he goes i say to another come it's not my eloquence it is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority are we together now so he says love not the world brothers and sisters let me tell you thank you David. this is the problem that jesus came to solve you see if you have an encounter with jesus listen He's not going to ask you whether you believe in the Old or New Testament. That, that is nonsense. Jesus is not going to ask you all those things. Jesus is not going to ask you and say, which part of the Ten Commandments did you keep or which law? Did, or, no, no, no. He's going to ask you one question. Just one question. His emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart. It's called Christ self-centeredness and self-centeredness christ-centeredness is when christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you god so designed that you can acquire things without Christ being at the center of your heart. But that becomes your undoing. Because they will destroy you and wreck your life. Brothers and sisters, I don't care how many hours you pray. I don't care how many Bible study concordances you have. I don't care how many services you have per week. If you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where Christ is at the epicenter of your heart you are carnal period period you are as carnal as the word carnal it's true it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of a believer you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you access revelation by diligence you can commit your mind and your spirit to access light without being spiritual theologians have spent 
yes i mean remember the scribes and the pharisees they were carnal yet they had the five books of moses of heart so knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality it can be helpful provided christ is at the center of your heart the foundation for a life of greatness listen the foundation for a life of the miraculous any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things carrying and hosting the presence of God that individual has true sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives not money not fame not cars not houses are we together not wife not husband not marriage that does not mean you are unconnected to these things but that christ sitting in your heart now gives value whatever comes comes under his authority if you don't get this this is this is this is power 101 if you don't get this thing forget about spiritual power there are fasting giants who fast with them they are getting lean but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart no so it won't work that way christ must become the center of your life and you can know your attachment your attachment to things your attachment to this system is God helping us when your life becomes Christ centered your life will speak particular languages number one thy will be done thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that Christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives number two that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal jesus the revelation of jesus becomes the obsession of your life not the revelation of your prestige not the revelation of your educational prowess not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things the revelation of jesus in and through your life this is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center. Number three, that any and all that you do becomes for his glory. The Lord's prayer, for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory. Thine is the kingdom. I receive all of the blessings, but yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. The Bible says, and they glorified God in me. Do you know, listen, do you know the reason why the more I, by the grace of God, keep learning about God, I am seeing why it is hard. Come, David Dam, why it is hard for many people to get the attention of God and to be committed with certain things remember my miracle service message last friday can god trust you that's a powerful message go and sit down and listen to it because what god gives you is a measure of his trust for you it's, it's as simple as that if there are dimensions you are praying about and say lord lift me up take me high and god says no way stop praying and saying oh god ask lord what is it in me that is the resistance what is in anointing that god cannot give you what is in prosperity that god cannot give you mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but god is not a fool just because he said i will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment list them in your mind you don't have to chorus them but list them money career power anointing revelation children 
wife, husband, house, whatever it is, cars and all of that, none of these things in themselves destroy. But when they come to you, the state of your heart can make them evil or good. Are we together now? Yes. Do you know the foundation for jealousy? Listen, the foundation for envy, backbiting and all of these things is one word, self. 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 It is because I want to give a perception that I am a big man. So if somebody calls me Joshua Selman, I now say, where is the apostle? You didn't add it. You see that? My ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and i react so i say this this guy you are not you are disrespecting me you are trying to say i'm not anointed you see that and this is our lives on earth are is like an an action theme people acting out the level of flesh and self and carnality sometimes we call it spirituality but it's really carnality really carnality love not the world brothers and sisters i show you a secret to rest this is where high blood pressure comes from hello hello this is where high blood pressure ask the doctors they will tell you self-inflicted worrying my ego is on the line see right my ego is on the line if this thing is not done i prophesy to david dam if that word does not come to pass they will now think i'm not an accurate man of god so my ego is on the line i'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because i want to see his life change i am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change that's the problem the scribes and the pharisees had it was not healing they would not have a problem if it happened through their hands but the fact that it didn't happen through their hands they just found an excuse and say madam don't get healing on sunday and jesus said what are you saying if your donkey falls inside a well on sunday will you leave it there and say i will come back on monday you like money and you are talking this woman her, her health is more than your own donkey if your donkey falls inside a well won't you go and get it hypocrites jesus told them do you know if i can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of christ i have brought you to a place is a level in the spirit where you will watch satan like this and he will watch you like the gulf that separated the rich man and abraham this is how you will stand truly speaking this is what empowers satan in our lives you know i've taught this here in this house comes when satan comes satan is not as accurate as we think he is listen when he comes he wants to know what is in your heart and the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random if he touches your relationship and you don't react he says it doesn't mean anything to you he touches money that's the one that's the area he gets for many of us he just touches your your hundred naira disappears and say no way we are fasting in this house who can and the devil says that's it that's it you think because you mention fasting god is glorified no that fasting is a is a revenge it's an emotional revenge mission your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover but it's still carnality and you put everyone under pressure nobody is eating six to six whoever did this and that and then the devil says that's it and let me tell you what he will do he will sit on your finances and rubbish your life because he knows that that is the area in your life that would distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relationship it's too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that all of a sudden they withhold your salary for two months and a man who was a gentle loving godly sincere born again committed church worker 
all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there so instead of him saying pastor alpha beat your wife beat your children beat your relatives destroy your spiritual life he just comes and says, pastor alpha what is that one area that christ is not yet lord over when he captures it it will create all the effects that he wants satan cometh to me what is he looking for something that gives him an attachment and let me tell you that thing is what we call lost an attachment i hope you like what i'm, pre I'm preaching this is a deliverance message yes it is yes it is yes it is i watch do you know brothers and sisters kai whatever god did to me may he do it to you truly speaking i say it with all humility my life is a free life i am i will be i will be lying if i tell you it was all my effort i think there is something about the sovereign power of god maybe it's an election of grace he did it but the moment hold my hands david Dam. another person come emeka come these are the luggages we carry one other person the ladies i don't know how you are going to hold me find a way of holding come 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 we're acting something here hold anybody come and hold my hand here. come okay they hold you she's afraid of holding me she wants to hold david Dam. now watch this this is a prayer warrior I'm showing you your spirit man you are a prayer warrior you are a fasting giant you are a word addict but you are carrying these are the cares Jesus is begging that you give him that we are refusing how old are you I'm 30 you mean it I thought you were 42 this is the Lord because a broken a broken uh, what spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face so this guy is carrying all this load do you think satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting do you know how satan ties them he doesn't use a rope he uses your heart that's what is there this is how to be spiritual you come to a point where you say lord i love you but these things are occupying my heart and lord i'm not irresponsible but then you have to become lord of my life genuinely i am too attached i can't sleep i sleep for one hour per day because i'm thinking about money a man can have nothing except it is given and you let go the issue of the job the devil will now deceive you and say you better be responsible if you don't think about it it won't come and he said no jesus i hand it over to you hallelujah this is the way of the cross you are getting free you too you are strange because you are now feeling lighter ah now all of a sudden you could pray before you go to pray after five minutes you stop praying on your own and you are thinking but now you could stretch for one hour two hours you are becoming lighter and then all of a sudden this one is a lady hallelujah are we together this is a lady or, or a, a, a gentleman it can mean anybody it doesn't have to be a lady or a, a, whatever lord jesus I must make it happen my way and god is saying you will wear yourself to death lord age is not on my side is it that you are not seeing and god is saying i am lord of all if i don't give you anything it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow and he said lord i've been looking at this lady's picture i can't even pray and god says I will, if you think i'm going to talk to you about that lady you are joking you better talk to me leave this lady and say god i want to but this lady she has become an idol maybe the lady yes it's true that's the name it's called idolatry let's call it what it is she has become an idol not because she's bad are you getting what i'm saying now but because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with god so god is going to say lay it down lay it down does not mean leave her lay it down means be willing to leave her hi and you say oh god no now how can i leave this guy this is my 11th relationship but and while you are talking all that nonsense god doesn't say anything he allows you then you now cry cry one night lie down roll and let it go your spiritual life you notice that the moment you surrender something lives in you the more you die you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down you see that love not the world love not the world this one 
is ministry. No, I must shine. My colleagues started ministry before me, and I mean, I must do ministry. This, this is a lot of, especially some of us that have the grace of God upon our lives. No, I must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is. And God says, look, calm down. For three months, you are not holding any meeting. I said, God, my whole reputation was on this small fellowship. Now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again. God said, that's exactly what I was trying to show you. It was never about the prayer meeting. It was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition. So lay it down. You lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes. Never will it resume. Because you are, you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather, you say, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I just came back from the throne. And God said, you won't use me like that. Is God speaking to us? By the time you lay these things down, let me show you. The moment you focus on Christ, all of you come closer. I'm focusing on Christ. Look at what is happening physically. Are you seeing this? My focus is on him. And I turn back and find out so the goal was never to take them away from me the goal was to be the epicenter of my life now watch this whereas before i was the maintainer of them now he's the maintainer so anytime he says give the car after all lord is it not by your mercy it came take it not oh god this voice if it's you let my window share all this all these these things we do are proofs of carnality I was sharing with the leaders somebody called me to confirm whether it was god that spoke to him to send fifty thousand to somebody and i asked him i said if that god told you somebody is supposed to send money to you will you ask to confirm and say lord is it you it's carnality it's the same thing we're saying from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you Yes, it's all about you From my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center It's all about you Yes, it's all about you Many people never prosper financially because of their attachment to money their attachment obsession obsession if they are passing and they smell money they turn their direction and god says no way it doesn't work that way the proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go the genuineness anything you cannot let go you are attached to it yes sir yes sir oh i'm so blessed hearing this message myself are we together I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? <laughs> Love not the world. This is how to be spiritual. You are giving yourself space to host his glory. Lord, I thank you I'm trusting you to get married and Lord says all right I will direct you say no Lord this is this is the lady this is the guy I must marry if you are the one it must be this and God says that's not the way it works thy will be done it is for your glory your thoughts are higher than my thoughts your ways are higher than my ways I give you all the praise that's a spiritual man Lord this is the business I want to do I thank you I have passion for it but Lord, I am totally submitted to your will. That which you want is what I will do. Hmm. That's the language of spiritual people. You see what God is doing in this ministry? It is because it is not my ministry. If it's my ministry, I would have been far older than I look now. Think how you think how I'll have to beg you and say please don't be angry pastor femi come next sunday no please if you're a pastor and you're giving yourself that headache please come to the fountain where great men can rest there is a sabbath where he takes over your life your ministry and all that concerns you 
a man can receive nothing except it is given to him born this into your spirit you cannot have naira and kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you you cannot have any idea until he gives to you you can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle that's why we don't give you count offering and count five naira you add puff puff one thousand took another drink one thousand or wine are we together now and then you come before God and squeeze 10 naira and you are smiling now all shall wait and God is looking at your heart look what Jesus did in the church he came and stood and saw what people were giving it was a reflection of their attachment it wasn't the money he saw a woman who had all do you know why Jesus was touched because she really didn't know who he was if she had known him he would be hypocrisy because he was there she just came that means she was doing it unsupervised it was what she would do whoever this God is of the Hebrews I love him and I lay down everything love not the world this is the problem of many people's destinies attachment attachment to money God gave you a car all of a sudden you carried that car and put it in your heart the garage is not enough for it how can you have a garage for a car and not and no altar for God? It's, it's carnality. We build our homes with garages for five cars and then you meet with God inside the toilet. You, you see our value? When you go to ease yourself, that's when you say, oh Lord, I'm alone with you. And God says, you are not serious. No. You provide a cupboard where you keep your documents, your certificate, because your paycheck is there. And then where do you keep him? He's not in your heart. He's not even around. Far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when I've not made sure. He says, David said, I'm sitting here in a palace and Lord, I know you sit in the heavens, but I've not built you a house. And God said, ah, you would have built, but you've shed so much blood. However, it was good that it was in your heart. Or you have gathered the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. All I want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be chapter 15 let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son Luke chapter 15 please give us verse 11 I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing the story of the prodigal son for many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother all of them did different versions of the same thing follow me verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons how many sons two sons next verse and the younger of them said to his father give me a portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them now watch this do you know that the house was all about his father but the children had access but then the child was angry because it was not in his name that selfishness self-centeredness wants it in your name so that somebody was healed in koinonia no i'm not happy let it be that apostle joshua selma was the one who god used so i'm not i'm more concerned about my name being touched to the miracle than it is the god of heaven that touched the person that self are you seeing that now yes the younger son had everything but every time he saw his father he had to wait on his father daddy i want something and the father was okay just a few minutes i said no no i want something so that i will it will be in my name and said daddy i'm tired of depending on you ah, that's what christians do 
Lord, I'm tired of waiting on you for this power. Give me this thing so that I can do it anyhow I want on stage. Why must I wait for you and worship before you come? Don't you know that it's falling my hand? After clapping for me and giving me water, I come and stand on the stage and I say, Lord, you have to come. Whereas people on my, it's my t-shirt they are wearing with my face, not your face. So Lord, give me this power so that I can operate it independent of you. Prodigal son. He didn't want it. He wanted it in his name, meaning his control. The father said, all right, everyone that asks it, receive it. Now watch this. It says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took on his journey. Are you seeing? He did not want submission. Uh -uh. A self-centered life wants to be the Lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living it says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want where did limitation enter his life when he left there was abundance and there was supply could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the father building an empire for yourself and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine brothers and sisters once in royalty having abundance to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities he wanted to regulate everything by himself this was his destiny and he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him 17 and when he came to himself you can be sure that he came to his mind he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare and i perish with hunger 18 i will arise and go to my father that's what someone needs to do this night and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and before thee 19 i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your servants verse 20 hallelujah and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off listen his father saw him and had what compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring it at the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry why for my son was dead and now is alive to be separated from the authority of god is death to be carnally minded is death you see there but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry sin two now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing the guy will always say he's innocent let's examine him now and he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and they said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was help me and would not go in therefore his father came out what in, whoever that father is must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said 
lo many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any of thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me so two of them wanted ownership it's just that one had it secretly in his heart and another verbalized and said give me two of them had the same lust it's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it whereas and was he not eating in the house was it not celebration that was going on was it not a calf that was but he want he said let me go and make merry with my friends is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing two of them two of them were expressions of the same thing one was quiet just like you and the other one is vocal like the sinner roaming around but the truth is that it's still the same thing jesus you believe ten higher higher be lifted higher jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher listen so there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything it must be car it must be money it must be reputation and you are the quiet brother you are the elder brother you like it you like the honor you like the prestige are we together you like and you can kill for it is just that you are not that courageous so we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person and the other one who is vocal but the word of god declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father their father attended to the younger one and he still had to come and attend to the elder one because two of them had the same problem christ-centeredness maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry that's why we have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart it may not be that you are humble maybe it's because joshua selman has not owned a private jet that's why you think he's a humble brother so god draws me down say mr man stop looking at jet look at my face so that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away there are people who would throw God out of the plane and remain there alone. Tonight is a call. You want to experience power? You want to experience miracles? You must come to a point in your life. Brothers and sisters, you can stand in front of your Jeep like this and say, what a beautiful car. And turn and say, Lord, truly, if you make demand of this, I will give you. And you are not just doing church language. It's from your heart. Yes. It's from your heart. That way, when God gives you the gift of a wife, you will not beat her and say, I must beat you. That's how we are in our family. When we are angry, we beat, we ask for forgiveness later on. That attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him. When God gives you children, you will not allow them to become lawless and say no is westernization because you will know that everything god gives you he demands that you act as though it's his own god never gives us ownership owners are rebels in this kingdom we are stewards of everything his resources mysteries whatever it is it belongs to him it only passes through me so brother, you want to become a multi-millionaire? Do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the Lord and support lives? If it's not in your presence If it's not by your hand If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand. Your spirit, don't let me have everything I need is in you.
question does your wardrobe belong to him does your bank account belong to him does your anointing know you fasted for it to come but does it belong to him now does your wife belong to him does your husband belong to him does whoever you are in a relationship with does it belong to him do your children belong to you or they are his property you are only a steward over them does your business belong to you does your church does koinonia belong to him or is joshua selman's property is his um ladder of greatness ah far be it from me too young for that kind of stress don't let me have it let everything i have be from you please don't let me have it for everything i need is in you listen this is the level where you will see dimensions of power beyond your wildest imagination someone will sit down on your bed and stand up and all of a sudden the fibroid is gone it was so unconscious there is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk with you broke is a joke god will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you the things that people do for me never never stop amazing me i thank god for the things that god does but i am so sometimes i just look and i say lord kai someone was going to bless me a few days ago and it was quite a very large amount and the person just said oh please send me your account number and i just as i was ending the call the spirit of god was speaking to me about a family that that money was for you know why god can speak to me like that because my life the account and the favor is his own i was so happy when he said it not just as a law for abundance it's with all pleasure my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised you're my one desire that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised hear the word of the lord tonight please come unto me come unto me all ye that labor labor profitless labor labor that you have carried your heart and put inside <laughs> there is a realm of rest a man can enter the rest of god it's not irresponsibility everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles he is the opener of the door he is the lifter of men you have separated your ego from these things if it happens well for you glory be to God if it does not happen well to you Lord be praised if the child comes Lord I thank you for the testimony if the child does not come Lord while I wait I still love you that's one who is Christ centered listen that's a spiritual man that's a spiritual God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly because of self, flesh. The lady must be this beautiful figure eight. The guy must be this, a millionaire must be this. And people keep jam-packing rubbish and trouble into their lives. How about people who don't even... Gone are the days, this issue of hearing God. People have eroded it. You just get up and say, I want to go to Abelkuta because there's green pastures there. How about brothers and sisters? Let's respect and fear God. There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. 
Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I am not working. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, if it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have for everything I need is in you. Listen. We're about to pray. Think for one moment the causes of your worry this morning. Think of the reason why you woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning. All that worry, trace it down. It is self. It is self because he gives his beloved sleep. You rejected it because you are... I don't mean waking up to plan your life. There are many they just wake up and say... <sighs> This ministry grow how can this ministry grow oh lord do this, this how can this ministry grow and god said you have been talking about ministry for one week you have not talked about me you forgot about me and you have been drumming lord my church must grow and god says how about me will i grow in your heart say god leave the show of you my church must grow prophecy came that is my year of this and that lord why is it that i go for meetings and nothing happens i love you i fast but i stand at the end of the meeting i'm ashamed and god says when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation then you will see the glory of the lord this is my daily prayer i'm i'm praying that god will infect you with that hunger tonight please hear me God is speaking to us. I want you to take, I'm not preaching. I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centeredness and let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying, but there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot give God. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie. But there is nothing I know. Especially things. Things. I can't be that stupid. No. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They will take me for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? It says seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha! I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop. He was the only one that had, was it? No, it wasn't a laptop, it was a computer. He was the only one who had a computer at that time. And we're trying to raise money for the crusade. And that's how this guy. I think it was, he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there, Suleiman. Computer for sale. I was so touched. I don't know how many of them he has now. He will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the factory. That's what happens when you're hard. Stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over. Find out what they did for God to trust them this much. Don't say you are lucky. It's because your father is this. My father is a lie. God supervises our hearts. I've taught it here in Koinonia, but let me say it. When God is closing a door over somebody, don't open it. Don't open it out of sympathy. There are people that I've wanted to help with all my heart and God has stopped me again and again. There is a dealing God is rotting in their life. Don't interrupt the dealing of God. Are we together? 
there are pastors for many years they love god but their church will not grow they are serving god and sometimes you can pity them and say look just invite them let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you and god says you are doing the mistake that achan did well um, not not uza you are doing uza's mistake you want to help god to hold the ark and you find that it will not only strike you it will strike others associated with you our hearts must be given to him ladies please look at me sisters let's hand over our hearts to him and end this lust for things clothes shoe they are wonderful god will give you more than your wildest imagination brothers let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show i am rich so that all and sundry will respect you is all nonsense if you are great you are great honor is a mantle if you don't have it you don't have it. it's as simple as that tonight is a night of thorough repentance we are going to cry before god and confess the idolatry the sin the carnality of idolatry to say lord i've carried this thing on my head like a do or die affair and it's almost killing me i hand it over there is peace in handing over your life to god there is peace in handing over your children to god there is peace in handing over your job hand over the difficult boss don't try to go and be looking for a godfather and the godfather say 50 50 agreed and you are in trouble now allow god who would do it 100 zero he will give you bless you we commit ourselves into things and projects god has no business in because we cannot let him have his way have your way lord have your way have your way lord have your way have your way lord have your way so much of my testimonies because I want people to focus on Jesus and the things that I'm teaching we came back from Lagos last week and after the meeting I was counseling people and I came out to just you know see the pastors and and then a gentleman was standing there and he was telling me that sir I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you and then I'm looking and say, my God, what is all this? I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things, I feel guilty. It's as if I'm even bullying them. I just, just talk to this, please talk to the protocol people and let the church, whatever they want to do with it there. And I came back and I think day before yesterday or so, it's still called the protocol. The church has said, somebody has given a post to the car. How do we convey it and bring it there? It is this car that someone has left God for. Father, this car must come. This is already, um, what month are we in now? February, car, it must come. And God is saying, Hapa, is this how small I am to you? I want to show you something. Open to the book of Matthew. Say, Matthew chapter 1. God, I've been crying. I've been saying, Can God is saying, Look, look how you are making a mess of yourself. When you love God and fear God, please hear me. He would take the prayer request of somebody. It's not because I'm a man of God. Don't go and ask him what I'm doing. Don't just say you are lucky. There's no luck in this thing. You walk it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire. Have your way. Have your way. We are fighting too many battles in our lives. These battles are not even there. They were created by our lust. Sister, let God bring a husband for you. Please rest. Rest and watch what God can do for you in two weeks. Ten years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying, Lord, I hand it over to you. I vow that I'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring. And while I wait for him, I will love you. I will serve your house and I will prepare for the blessing. God says, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. And all of a sudden, the brother will not be able to sleep again. He will see clearly. There's no haze. There's no confusion. Straight. This is your wife. Stand up and go and see her parents. Instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around. What of brothers? 
I must do this. If I can call this one, and then he calls this one for me, and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha. If I can beg a Jimmy, and then beg a Benga, and then beg this and that. I, if I put them from, I think three plus three will be six. Three plus three will be not be six forever. Because there are demons. There are wicked forces that will keep minusing one, minusing different things, and the equation never adds up. But when you add it over to God, one plus one can be six. One plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says, I create. I don't see under. No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord's. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job equal to an estate. This is God. This is God. Whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering. We are going to pray. Tonight, the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest. The spirit life demands that our desires, listen, our appetites, our ambitions, our aspirations come under submission to his will. This is all God is asking. I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife. Did you hear what they said? They had been trusting God for a baby boy. Are you seeing that? But notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony. The first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order. And then without any effort as it were, a child came could it be that your prayer request your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to you when you empty it and keep Christ alone then he begins to bring every and anything we are going to sing take all of me please take it high for me don't just sing it as a special number I want you to sing it from your heart. Some of you, as you are singing it, God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. All of me, all of me, Lord. You have my hand. Use all of me, use all of me. I release my everything. You have my everything. Say all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. You all of me. Take all away the idol that sits in my heart attempting to take your place lift your voice and cry take it away except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain Take 
away the idols, oh God. Shakote kaparakotash. Take it away. Let that circumcision in the spirit. Let that circumcision over money. Let that circumcision over power. That circumcision over titles. Let it happen, oh God. Purge me. Purge me. Purge my heart. Remove everything, every lust that I'm so attached to, every lust that I'm so attached to that will not allow me enthrone you a Christ centered life, a life where everything about you, aside from God, nothing is a do or die affair. Christ, Lord, enthrone. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the Lordship of Jesus. Mention it. Whatever God has done and given you, mention it by name and bring it under the Lordship of Jesus. The marriage you gave me, I bring it under the Lordship of Jesus. The children you have given me, they are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. I rededicate them a handover ceremony. The job you gave me, I hand it over to you. The relationship you gave me, I hand it over to you. If you brought it, you are the one who can maintain it. The burden is killing me. Pray. The burden is destroying me. Lord, you are the one who gave me the prayer group, the church, the business. I'm tired of struggling by my strength. Bring me rest. Bring me rest. The rest that only you can bring.
chapter 8 verse 18 Isaiah chapter 8 we are praying you let tonight's teaching enter your spirit and you will watch your life like a charm favor open doors I tell you the Bible says behold I and the children whom who gave you who gave you is God that gives increase I and the children the Lord had given me are for signs and for wonders in Zaria, in Nigeria, in Israel. But where did the signs and wonders come from? From the Lord of hosts. I and the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. We are going to pray. You are connected to this vision you are part of this ministry pray and say lord not only will my life produce signs and wonders i will be an epistle of that possibility lift your voice and pray i declare pray that i and the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and for wonders for signs financial signs and wonders supernatural signs and wonders dimensions of revelations dimensions of encounters dimensions of increase dimensions of influence dimensions of prayer grace access to the mysteries of the kingdom spiritual men kingdom minded people Hallelujah. Can I add one last prayer point for us? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you that whatever you bring to pass through my hand all my life is already rededicated for your glory. Pray that prayer and watch my God surprise you. Pray that prayer and God will give you in one day what your salary cannot give you in one year. Pray that prayer and God will give you houses you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence. And it's important that we give God room to do these things in the lives of people. If you are a preacher, please listen. It is good to teach people the word. It is good to help people grow. It is good to provide a platform for spiritual enlightenment. But sometimes people don't need knowledge. They need real results. There are times that, listen carefully, there are times that you don't go to meet a patient in an ICU and tell the patient while you are almost dying take note of the following number one next time 
don't stay around mosquitoes number two and the patient is gasping for breath there are situations that don't need counseling there are situations that don't need advice there are situations that need a head-on collision with the power and the grace of god there are people sitting right now looking at me smiling but with death sentences in the name of medical verdicts that's not the time to start giving people any any advice you give people love the lord in 10 years make sure you are consistent the person says i'm dying right as i'm dying right now take me out of that situation and then i can give you my attention to mentor me and build me hallelujah i believe in miracles i really believe in miracles i believe in the manifestation of the power of god i believe that the power of god can be made visible here and now i believe that god anoints us to provide supernatural solutions you are here because of the things you have heard god do you are here because of the lives you saw him change and let me tell you your case will not be different tonight in the name of jesus christ but i just want to encourage you so that you don't come hoping will god bless me will god lift me is he interested in the joy that my family will have when results come is he interested in the new level of anointing i will receive as a man of god is he concerned that my church is going down is he concerned that everyone i laid hands on was not healed is he concerned that i am going down spiritually the God we serve is a lifter. He does not bring people down who love him and stay true to him. So it's important for you to be ready to wave goodbye to all of the challenges that you've made so much sacrifice to come here to present to God. Don't sit down and hope that, oh God, um, well, let's see what you will do. No, no. Remember, remember, I have taught you, for those of you coming for the first time, listen, the very factor that is responsible for results in the kingdom is the anointing, his divine power. Your faith only connects you to the anointing. It is not your faith as it were that brings you results. Your faith is like a host that connects the tap to the plant that needs refreshing. But it's the power of God. And let me tell you sincerely, where the power of God is lavishly allowed to find expression, then darkness must flee. Then lives must change. Then situations must be transformed. Are we together now? Expect the hand of God. Do you know, it's amazing how that you will see people gathered like this. And you will think just because they are looking at a preacher, they are expectant. Many people are used to God not working in their lives. To the point that they don't expect anything. They may look and say amen and hope that they will get something. There is a level of hunger and desperation like jacob where you tell the lord i did not leave the east the south the west i didn't travel out of this nation to come into nigeria come into zaria just to watch people get healed get blessed and share the grace and go back no there is a level of insistence insistence give us hebrews chapter 11 please and verse 6 just a charge and then we'll minister tonight but without faith, the Bible says, it is impossible to please him. The him there is God. For he that cometh to God, this is a rule. This is a spiritual law. That he that comes to God must believe that he exists. And then number two, that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you not know that transporting yourself from the great distance you came from, is proof of diligence is proof that you trust god you held that report you held that cancer report you held that this and that report and you continue to believe god our assignment is continue to align in prayer and true sacrifice to say lord continue to multiply your anointing so that the issue that could not be solved in january can be solved in march I've taught you how the anointing works and let me just teach it very quickly for the sake of those of us who may be encountering this ministry for the first time I taught you that the anointing works like money listen very carefully that 
you only can solve spiritual problems or problems that are within the level of the grace you carry the same way you can have 10,000 naira 10,000 naira can buy you a few things it cannot buy you a car it cannot buy you a house but it is still money if you need to buy a house you need more of the same thing to the amount that can purchase the house every challenge in the realm of the spirit has a level of grace and anointing that can solve it just because you are anointed does not mean all problems will bow I gave an example yesterday while I was teaching in Abia and I told them that you can bring someone for instance in a wheelchair and keep the person outside and a man of God can even lay hands on the person and the person may not be healed he will go back sick are we together now you take the same person and keep that person in Benny Hinn's overflow not the main bowl overflow and right there he comes and whilst he's singing the person gets up the difference is not God the difference is the extent of the anointing how God anointed Jesus not that Jesus was anointed the information is not that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed you are a blessing when you stay with God to be anointed to the degree to which most problems that come are under the level of your grace people have come to me and with all humility as soon as they begin to talk I discern what their challenges are and I know that this problem is far far below the level of the grace that I have sometimes I would not even pray I would say go it's done so the, the man of God's assignment is that while you are building your expectation while you are paying so much to transport yourself to be here while you are fasting and opening your heart our own assignment is to stay with god to say i've seen your grace before but evil is multiplying there are situations that know there are superior levels of graces that can solve it when someone loses 10 million naira and comes to you and says I'm about to die I don't know whether I'm alive or not but the last time they told me I was dying help me at that point that's not the time to start teaching him and say okay be patient this is you can teach him financial principles but he needs that raven that fed Elijah to come to him quick let the raven feed him first when someone tells you my life it's not moving forward all doors are closed and because of that my father is about to leave my mother they have concluded that the divorce will happen in the month of May that's not the time to settle down and start saying oh this and that line upon line precept they are, they are, a, a family is about to be torn apart oh how we need the power of God in this generation we need the power of God more than falling down we need the power of God more than the jargons and the stories that we talk. Let me tell you, in the final analysis, it is his divine power that is the giver. And if that power is not resident within you to the degree that it takes to provide supernatural solutions, then you will continue to see people frustrated. If you're a man of God and you came here, listen to me. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. Let me repeat myself. You are not a blessing when you are not anointed. You may be a good person. You may be a sincere person. It takes more than sincerity to be a blessing. The Messianic prophecy, Isaiah chapter 61. Please give it to us. Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and then he says because the lord hath anointed me the lord had done what please talk to me koinonia the lord hath anointed me so the factor there is the anointing and then it begins to list all the possibilities that can now happen on account of the anointing it takes the anointing to preach glad tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind up the brokenhearted. It takes the anointing to proclaim liberty. It doesn't take a mouth to proclaim liberty. It takes the anointing. You can have the mouth and say, be free. But it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives. It takes the anointing 
to open up prison doors. Next verse. It takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and then the year of vengeance of our God. Look up please. It takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn. Verse 3. To appoint to them that mourn in Zion. So even in Zion there are those who mourn. He didn't say to appoint to them that mourn outside Zion. They are in Zion, yet they are mourning. To give them beauty. Look at what the anointing can do. Hi. The anointing, please listen, listen, families, listen. The anointing can give a man beauty. 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 For ashes. Many families know what ashes looks like. When a family has 10 people and no one is employed, when a family has 10 people and the highest earner in that family earns 2,000 per month, ashes. But the Bible says by the anointing you can give men beauty. Beauty. You came for koinonia with ashes and God says keep your ashes here. Take beauty. As you are sharing the grace, you are walking out with it. And then you continue to see your life. You know you have carried beauty by the results that follow. It says, until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. Then it says, the wilderness shall be counted for a fruitful vine. And then the fruitful vine counted for a forest. Beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And then it says that they might be called the trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. God is still beautifying the lives of people. My brothers and my sisters, don't get used to your situation. I know you've trusted God in spite of it. But God wants you to now continue trusting him without it. It's, it's honorable and it is noble to trust God in spite of it. But what if he takes the pain away? What if he takes the situation away? What if he takes the predicament away? It takes a wicked man of God to watch what is going on in this country. And to watch what is going on in the times that we live in. And act as if nothing is happening to people. There are real problems. Poverty is a real problem. Young people now have high blood pressure because after spending 10 years for a four-year course and graduating with a 2-1, you are roaming around the streets like an arm robber with your certificate that seems to have no value. Look at the, you know, we, we've, we've been talking about, I don't know if it's happening only in Zaria. But we've been talking about the increased rate of suicide, especially among young people. When you sit down and try everything and it does not work, you just tell yourself, I'm better off dead. And you at least, my money cannot rent a house, but it can buy a rope. What can it buy? A rope. And the spirit of death will help you to buy a rope. And you find a tree and hang yourself. And you who should have been a blessing to a family has now died. And then people come to church with that kind of pain. And a man of God says, don't worry. It's not all about your needs. It's about Jesus. I agree. It's about Jesus. But man was not designed to bend that law indefinitely. There has to be an opportunity given. When the Spirit of the Lord will step into the lives of people, I will never, never watch people go through things that the power of God can change and act as if nothing can be done about it. No, sir. Whoever told you that the power of God cannot do anything about the demons that oppress families? Whoever told you that the yokes of darkness can remain unhindered? I know you have prayed. I know you have fasted, but I've told you why it did not happen. It takes a level of grace.
Whoever told you favor has stopped working. Don't generalize pain. There are men who have found Goshen, a place of safety. There are men who have found Bethel. There are men whose lives are like Beulah and Hephzibah. The planting of the Lord. When God plants a garden, will it not grow? He says the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. This is the place of encounter. I want you to know that this is a place where God increases your convictions. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life will change. Do to me what you want. Listen. When the Lord turn again the captivity of your family, when the Lord turn again the captivity of your destiny, He says we were like them that dream. How beautiful is it to see the other side of pain? How beautiful is it to see the other side of a man's trusting God? How beautiful it is to see a man trusting God for grace. Lord, I know you still anoint men, but where is the anointing? When you see the other side of that man. How beautiful it is to see a wilderness turn into a fruitful vine and turn into a forest. I believe in miracles. I believe in the hand of God. I believe the supernatural can invade the world of men and correct and adjust things. I believe in 24 hours God can change a man's life. Listen, I believe in the law of process, but I believe in speed too. I believe God still lifts men. I believe God still uses men to make statements in a territory. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And God says, come, let me use you. Let me show men that I am still God, the lifter of men. I believe this. I believe that God is a healer. I believe he's a deliverer. I believe when men lose things, they can get it back. Yes, sir. Including time. Including time. I believe that when men lose things, they can get it back. I believe God can anoint ordinary men. Men who are just available. But the level of grace is not there. But I know there is a place a man can come to where you encounter the power of God. Everywhere is not the same. No. No. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest his power everywhere. I believe in the power of God. I was sent not only to reveal his face, but to reveal his power. To let men know that he's still alive. To correct misunderstandings about God. Please listen to me. I want to charge your faith before we pray. I believe that challenges can end. I believe that problems can end. Did you hear what I said? I believe a man can sit down and search left and right and only see the goodness of God. I believe it. I believe it. I believe prosperity is real. I don't believe prosperity destroys a Christian. I believe in the blessing of the Lord. I believe in what it can do to your family. I believe in what it can do to your children. I believe in what it can do to your health. I know poverty causes sickness. I know it causes worry. Nobody will preach into embracing nonsense. No. I believe a man can prosper even as his soul prospers. I believe in speed. I believe God can compress 
what should happen in five years in one month I truly believe it I truly believe it I believe God can restore time when a woman has been barren for seven years if she gives birth to one baby we thank God but it's not a statement enough when she gives birth to triplets God took nine years of space in three three years and compressed it in one year now that's victory over time the hardiness of the hearts of men will require some dimensions of results to break their pride to honor God please listen let me tell you we are not going to use stories and noise to get people to Jesus wealth is a weapon the anointing is a weapon favor is a weapon mercy is a weapon wisdom is a weapon what are you fighting with desire you will not win it takes you being equipped with the spiritual arsenals that have been made for the victory of the saints in light the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified I believe a man can weary the devil to a point where he will let you go I believe you can live in a territory and create your own climate financially spiritually I believe it listen out of everything I'm saying throw away the ones you don't believe and open your heart to the ones you believe I believe a believer can serve God better in an atmosphere of comfort when your children's school fees are paid, you will serve God better. Don't let religion come with the pride of men and pretend that it does not matter. Yes, I know that none of these things should affect our love for God. But let me tell you the truth. There is a level of pain you continue to have that can harden your heart towards God. It takes time to know God. It takes time to serve God. And that's the time the devil does not want to give you. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around chasing money. You will never have time to serve God when you are moving around lobbying a way to, li to be lifted. Vain is the help of man. People of God, please hear me. God did not gather us tonight to waste our time. He gathered us tonight to make real the things in our lives that pertain unto life and godliness. Can I tell you this? Whether you believe in what I said or not, it does not change the truth. The truth was buried. It took only three days. It came out. So whether you believe in the truthfulness of what is said or not, you embrace poverty and see what it does to your life and your family. Embrace mediocrity and see what it does. Embrace sickness and see how much you will spend per week. Your entire resources, when you are finally broke, then the person will die. Is that sickness? Why will it ten, take 10 years to build one house? Is that a testimony? A prostitute will sleep with a man overnight and wake up by the next day with estates and houses and everything let's be careful the things we say about God because many of them are not true please hear me especially for our precious visitors don't magnify your challenges and come hoping God will change your life we are talking God here, not a doctor, not a consultant, not an architect, not a monarch, the God of the universe. You may not be sick in your body, but who told you he cannot change your life? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That God can speak to a man while you are here and compel him to bless you. That God can give you a dimension of grace that you didn't enter this building with. 
and you turn back and on Sunday you climb your pulpit as usual and suddenly fire a new dimension of grace do you believe in what I'm sharing if you been evil know how to give good gifts let me tell you you can hold on to the hands of God and say it was never about your hands it was about your heart but tonight I need your hands too in addition to your heart step in over my life step in please don't give up on God wake up don't give up on God don't come here hoping I've waited waited the God of heaven can compress time If you don't believe all this there's no point being here tonight because we are going to pray and you must insist that tonight is not the night when I will clap for anybody I came to mean business with my destiny listen when we begin to pray I like you to insist that anything that does not bring glory to God in your life must leave this night no matter what it is some of you may need to rewrite your prayer request again because of your pain you've stopped writing some things you just concluded that god this one just just leave this issue no when it was time to resurrect lazarus he said roll away the stone roll away the stone prove that you believe in resurrection by rolling away the stone two things men did they rolled away the stone and they lose the man what if they lose Lazarus and they found out he was not alive or he just fell and collapsed? Your destiny must open up tonight. It's not a blessing for people to doubt. The Bible says to be diligent in these things, to prove your calling and election, to make it sure. There are things that must be in your life to validate your call and your election. If you're a man of God here, trust God for grace, for God's sake. Just go and stand before people and just open a scripture and speak and close it and say, let's pray. No. That's what the scribes did all the time. But Jesus came and opened and read the messianic prophecy. And he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. They thought they would share the grace. He closed it and he told the guy with the withered hand. He said, stretch your hands. These things I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. Can we pray? Please find a serious neighbor. And I like you to pray from the depth of your heart. The gift is only given to them that ask. God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Pray. Pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness 
must be turned to a fruitful vine pray pray don't look around that wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine place something upon my life oh god place something upon my destiny upon my business upon my church Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point, and the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me, please, if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, O oh God. Pray, do to me, O oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tears. You call 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. Do to me, oh God. You said I will have my child in 2019. Do to me as you have spoken. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, 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 yeah, yeah,
Hallelujah. Please look up. Please look up. I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place. Because you see, let me tell you, every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of every season. And if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season, you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. Believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there. Period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I'll stand tonight praying on the grace of for speed hold on hold on please listen there is a reason why i continue to say this many destinies are too slow to glorify god are we together now when the devil cannot keep you at a standstill then your progress will be so slow it is say i must walk the walks of him while it is day that means i need to gain time it says, for the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life that will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace. And I know it is true. That God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace. And inside and outside. That anointing. And the anointing works. Let me just tell you. The anointing works. You will see people begin to run. It's, it's not anything superstitious. It is just the character and the operation of that anointing. We need it. The Lord put it in my heart. We need it for our businesses, ministries, and so on and so forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I declare right now, at the count of three, let this grace for speed, that you have provided even for this season let it rest on people now i release that grace take that grace now please bring them out take that grace now inside outside everywhere i activate the operation of this grace i shift your life in the name of jesus to strength dimensions in the spirit receive the grace for speed receive the grace for parousia receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Jezreel I command speed 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 bring them out speed help that woman please my God I'm still praying in the name of Jesus 
It says, ye have encompassed this mountain for too long. Turn ye not what? I prophesy again. Like, like, like fire from heaven. Let that grace for speed mantle a family now. Not just an individual. Let it come upon families. Families receive speed. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. New level. Speed. Speed. Bring them out. Speed. You will never be the same. Never be the same. I'm not praying for individuals now. I'm praying for families. Any family stagnated here. I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost and I prophesy speed inside and outside. I release speed right now. Now the Lord is that spirit, he says. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs. Chains. And the Lord is saying, the Lord is bringing deliverance now. I'm seeing chains. If you are under this category as I'm praying now, the fire of God, I'm seeing fire moving. But not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare. Is it not written that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by this change, I declare be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty I want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony are we together now He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I mean, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. Bye. Ah. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night but except God is not God you must be free right now in the name that is above all names I pray for individuals and families alike it is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound but in the name of Jesus everywhere here overflow one two three outside as you shout that name that is above all names i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of god in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and your go now go now Release destiny. Release destiny. Ela barakatos shepekeretos. Ela bratos kepereketos.
every ordinance that is not the planting of God let it go now let it go now I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit let it go now I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort they that mourn I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears that terminates everything that brings tears Bring them out. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh eh. Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time but please I want you to every time the Lord shows me this then I know that he wants me to move around I begin to see lights a similitude of angels by my left and right and is is a very is a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people when this begins to happen all I need to do is you don't have to touch me just move around your role listen to me except God is not God as he has anointed as I pass your row if there is anything that is not of God it must let you go are we together now so please you pray the moment we do that then we begin to minister to the sick these things are signs and wonders they are supernatural they are supernatural even by the spirit thank you Jesus please I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you Jesus that everything that is not of God must give way in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now 
the hand of God is upon you in the name of Jesus Christ receive the Lord is touching you I'm seeing God's taking something out of someone's stomach here it's going now now I release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of Jesus be free now I'm seeing fire rising from this row just from I don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this row right now in the name of Jesus I decree and declare can they hear me Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now. 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 Now! Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone, it is over. An anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 
Ova, 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 Shalakata, Ova. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them. Help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves. Be free now. In the name of Jesus, I declare and declare. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Every devil of darkness. Be free now. Please open your heart and receive. Stretch my hands here. Anything that help. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I'm seeing a chain. A chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God. I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around. It's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me, Overflow 2. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Every reproach. Go now. Go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please, except God is not God. Whatever it is that has held you, as I pass by the Spirit, the power of God comes on you. Some of you will be receiving impartation. It's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, be free. I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, whether you are an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound. 
but in the name of Jesus one more time I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three one two three be free now be free now you came for a miracle service Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but I just want you to know you are part of and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now, from the front to the back, upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please, everyone, overflow. One, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit and declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray.
Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, when, when we do these things, we are not wasting time at all. You need to see what the Lord um, did in some of those overflows. There are people who have real issues and sometimes, Madam, please lift your hands. I'd like you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. Flames upon your prayer life. I declare capacity in your spirit man. Capacity. I swing open the door for utterance in prayer. Grace to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray hallelujah if you are in ministry i pray again for the grace for prayer let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are not a man of prayer you are not in ministry believe me you are not in ministry it's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry i decree and declare a supply of the spirit an ability from heaven upon men and women of god that anyone who has the call of god upon his life whether you know it or not the grace to pray take it now 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 the grace to travail not give me tea and bread not give me tea and bread to pray destiny altering prayers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll quickly minister to the sick now. Um, please listen. For those of you who are coming for the first time, we usually 
take prayer requests that I pray for now. And if you have not written your prayer request, please do so. You can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write. While we are doing that, please, um, I will minister to those overflow one. Okay, the main auditorium and overflow two. Please listen. Main auditorium and overflow two. Um, when I ask you to come, you will come and stand in front here. You will be ministered to right here. Overflow one, you will stand in front of your projector stand. That away from the canopy to allow for space. Now, um, will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for. We believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk, you're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have. While you are coming out, please, ushers, PR, join them or any other department um, to collect the, the prayer request. Those online, you can connect by faith if you're trusting God for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here. Praise the Lord. I believe in miracles. If you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers or you'll find a few people who will lift up your hands or lift up baskets and you'll be allowed to put it there now very quickly those trusting god to be ministered to um for any kind of healing make your way out quickly just like i've designated please quickly you come stand here by faith overflow one in front of your projector stand overflow three in front of your projector stand overflow two you can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast. Very, very fast so that we can finish. While you are doing that, please... Please let me advise, especially for those outside, as you are walking out, make sure your phones, your bags, and any of your belonging is safe. And then help those under the anointing. God is delivering people, setting people free. And let's just let him be God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Accept the people ministering to you, ask you questions. Don't worry. Just a touch, and then you'll be back to your seat. And check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let incurable situations live. And I pray, God, that you give your people testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Nigeria.
These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your... You see, you cannot... I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had... Is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh, dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From Venice. I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus. Look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. In the name of Jesus. My friend, look at me. You came all the way from Thailand. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the Living God, this fractured leg, I fix it back now. You see what is happening to you? What do you feel happening to you? Huh? Look at me. Go, run. Don't mind them, just focus on me. If you're having pain, we're not acting here. Huh? So if you're having any, a miracle has happened to you. When I held your leg, I felt the power of God moving through you. You see, this thing you see is a very demonic thing. It's not about fracture. Do you understand? Number one, come, my friend. You're together too. I want to pray for you. You see, God is looking for people to represent him in every sphere. Huh? Just because you're footballers, doesn't mean that you ignore God. Many footballers don't love Jesus. They love football and they love the money that comes with it. But we're not only here. God has perfected this. Let me pray on the x-ray, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this miracle remain forever. Amen. I want to pray for both of you. I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you. But listen to me. I'm sure I don't know you. I've never seen you. Can I prophesy on your career? In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, from today, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are a footballer, but you play by the anointing, my friend. It takes more than just kicking a ball. I release the grace to excel. And for you, I release the grace to excel. Right now, two of you will return back to Thailand, and the Lord will honor you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you so much for your patience. We're about to pray on the requests. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I truly believe that as we pray on these requests, that every situation that has defied God, it must answer to the name of the Lord. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Out now! Who else? Praise the Lord. Please let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you are yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation. This is, this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched. Not everybody can be prophesied to, not everybody may be personally ministered to. But this is a representation of your pain. It's a representation of your expectation. And please, I want you to believe, release your faith. You may not have come out requiring healing. And with all the ministrations, you may not have been directly ministered to. I want you to believe because this is representing you before God. I want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately. Pray passionately. You're not done. That Lord, this that I'm bringing before you, this will be the last. I truly believe. Make sure we collect for those outside. If you are still being ministered to, no problem. You can just focus while you are receiving hallelujah 
praise the Lord praise the Lord I'm seeing fire burn on this thing I wanted to go down on my knees but I just saw fire burning and the Lord said I should declare and speak over it I'll declare and speak over it um, there is one gentleman and one lady one gentleman one lady the power of God is coming on two of them the moment that happens then I have the release to speak on this these are signs and wonders my precious people sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them a gentleman and a lady this is the sign that God gave me now I'm ready to pray in the name of Jesus believe with me I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every request laid before God here I decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hear me the Bible says these Egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore I declare that everything that defied the name of the Lord represented here I declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide I call on the God of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this I'm not sure I, I think Koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and I held and I just heard that it was done in the spirit and I said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today I have seen them they are strong they are fine the Bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except God instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience I want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it they are just different versions of expressing your need for favor I want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of Jesus Christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names I decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of Jesus there are requests written here 
it is mercy that will answer it the bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered i declare mercy upon this request in the name of jesus christ father i stand representing the desires the pain of your people you have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of jesus christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests i banish them from your life in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus christ May it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this. Yes. Now please lift your hands. We're closing. Let me speak over your life. It is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the word of God. I've seen its ability to turn, to change, to transform lives. There was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week i thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to zaria and testify himself that's why i didn't say it he walks in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now i don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah What is strange about an angel of the Lord coming to drop a key somewhere? Didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number? He shared here, you remember? Gave him a number, he calls a general in the army and they say, who gave you my number? And he doesn't know who gave him his number. Bottom line, he gets a job as a result. Look, let me tell you, there is nothing God cannot do. I'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies in the name of jesus christ A gentleman here one of the years checked his name on admission list 
and clearly saw that he didn't get anything he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son i'm not surprised and he came i don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers returns back to the board and checks and there is his name admission list see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison i pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may god compel them to speak about you in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone trusting god for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare that between now and august by the grace and the name of the lord return with a miracle job hallelujah i pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man john wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death i heard a man of god give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially i pray for you may the month of june be your month please believe me may the month of june be your month let the hand of god let the grace of god rest upon you god causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of jesus christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i pray in the name of jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now i don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of god you will open your bible and look at it like this like a storybook you can read a book of 600 pages in one week but you can hardly finish one page 
of the Bible is an attack. I decree and declare. Let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of God, may it rest upon you. May it rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Two more prayer points and we're done. Hearing is our father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The grace for results is called the power of performance. Receive that grace now. I speak to you, produce results. Produce results. Repeated results. Predictable results. In every area of your life. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit i don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience i declare rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level thank you jesus thank you jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that god gives you and be sure to make it a duty to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of god is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that god is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith so be sure that as god touches you you may not have the luxury of coming down to zaria for those of you who are far but we're on various social media platforms you can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of god praise the lord still standing everyone our time is gone i want to make an altar call i believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention lend me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle i have given my life to jesus but i need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the Holy Spirit should already be convicting you. Do not wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Let me for time's sake count one to five. One. Quickly, please, if you're coming, hurry up. 
win that war. Do not say we came in group and I do not want anybody to know that I'm handing over my life to Jesus. Receiving the life of God is not a funeral service. It's something that is worth celebrating. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Keep coming. Come to Jesus. Young and old, come to him. The Bible says, all who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. I don't believe this is all overflow one, overflow two. Join them very quickly. And the Lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out. God bless you. I salute your courage. Please lift your right hand as I lead you to make this prayer. You are not just reciting a poem. This is a real um, conversation between you and the Lord. You are receiving his life and you are handing over yours. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it from the depth of your heart, Lord Jesus. Some of you come for altar call when we are saying in Jesus' name. You are not born again. You should come. The, the, the prayer, you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you resurrected for me tonight I receive your life I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life I have the life of God and I declare that from tonight I am a child of God I move forward ever and backward never amen Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these ones. Precious as they are, we receive them into the fold, the family of faith. And I declare their sins forgiven. And I declare by the authority of scripture that beginning from today, the grace to walk victoriously is released upon them. Holy Spirit, I commend them to you that you continue your ministry in their lives. Make mighty men and women out of them. I bless you with the grace that grants you capacity to stay consistent. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I salute all of you for making this decision. And then for those who also made online, thank you for making this decision. Very quickly, I'd like you to follow. There's someone waving her hands, a lady. And all of you in concert, please follow her. And um, there will be a group of people to receive you very briefly. And you'll be back. Let's honor them. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.